What is going on, everybody? It's your boy, Che Cole, and let's go ahead and hop into this episode. So I really want to deal with something that I, I've kind of noticed and I've kind of seen, uh, if you will, just in how uh, we as believers often move and uh, go throughout our days. And so this is really, uh, some of you may have saw, uh, if you follow Cold Therapy on Instagram or Facebook, I had to preach this past weekend and in part of uh, that message for Easter Sunday, I was really dealing with uh, what I'm going to talk about here in terms of many of us uh, believers are dealing with things that he died for. Right. And what I mean by that, and that's why I want to ask the question or open with the question, why are you dealing with this? Why are you dealing with that? Because uh, there are certain things, there are things that have transpired in our lives that uh, because uh, in uh, for whatever reason, because we may have a limited perspective of who Christ is, of who God is in our lives, we start to deal with and take on things that he died for, things that don't even have that we don't even have to worry about stress about you're anxious about different things you're worrying about different things but he died for those things and because he is our lord and savior he will take care of us and so we really have to wrestle with uh, why do i believe uh, why do i only see god in this certain area and this really deals with our faith this really deals with our trust in who god is um, because uh, some of you, some of us, we trust God. We have faith in God to a certain extent. We have faith in God that he can do these things, right? We'll, we'll list those things. We'll, we'll, we know God can come through in these areas, right? For our personal journey, for our personal walk. Yet the, the God we read about, the Jesus, the Christ that we serve, that we read about in our Bibles tells us that he he does all these other things, but we, because we have such a limited perspective of faith, of a limited perspective of who Christ is, we don't acknowledge uh, just the fullness or embrace the fullness of who Christ is. And so in doing that, in having a limited perspective of who Christ is, of who God is in our lives, it affects how we see God. It affects how we receive from God. Right. So if I only see him and this is what I said uh, during that message, during that clip, if I only see him as a carpenter, which we know Jesus was a carpenter in his uh, when he was on earth in the flesh. Right. If I only see him as a carpenter, I understand that he has the power to fix my, my house, right? But if I see him as Lord and Savior, that means that he has the power, the authority. I recognize the power and authority that he has to help my life, to help fix and empower me through my life, right? And so uh, the, the practical example, because I know some of y'all like, OK, I get that. I understand that. Uh, let's go real practical, real plain here. Uh, your significant other, your boo, your bae. Right. It, it only took the uh, thing with that in terms of your significant other, in terms of your girlfriend, your husband, your wife, uh, your boyfriend, whoever. Right. The thing that allows you to acknowledge who they are in your life came through the recognition and the awareness of who they had the potential to be, of who they uh, presented themselves to be. Right. You could not receive them as such because some of y'all just be honest. You don't even try to turn this off now. Some of you weren't interested in your partner. At first, you didn't find them attractive. You didn't think they were funny. You didn't think they were cute, whatever the case may be. But until don't don't even look at them right now. If you're in the car with them, don't even look at them. Just keep looking straight. <laughs> I'm playing with you. Uh, but some of you didn't recognize them as such until maybe your eyes were open unto how great of a guy they were, or how great of a woman she was. Right. Until your eyes were open. See, some of y'all, there's a quick tangent. Some of y'all got your your husband or your wife in the friend zone. And that's why you complain to God when they're in the friend zone. All right. That's another episode. But listen, so it it took you recognizing and receiving them as no, this person could be my husband, this could be my wife. This could be my life partner uh, that I have uh, built this relationship or rapport with. But it took 
building uh, or seeing them as such in order for you to receive them as such. And it's the same thing with, with God, with our Heavenly Father. Until I see Him, we can't impose certain relationships or uh, allow our unbelief to get in the way. That's why it's so important, you know, when you read the scripture, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. So we got to work on those areas where I know God can do these things. Like, I know He'll provide in my finances. I know He'll provide in this area. But maybe you don't trust Him in your relationships. Maybe you you're believing God for a husband, for a wife, and you're like, none of my relationships work. Lord, I've been praying. I've been fasting about it. And these people out here trip. The dating pool is just crazy, right? And so you only believe God for certain things. Or we believe that God can heal the cold, but what about cancer? Yeah. And so we really have to deal with that. We have really have to wrestle with that. And since we still kind of in the Easter vein, uh, we like to say or the church would like to say or we everybody shouts over. He got up with all power in his hand. Yet we believe that he only got up with some power when we limit who he is, when we limit God, when we limit Christ. And we only recognize the some things that he can do, the some things of his uh, omniscience and his sovereignty. When we only acknowledge the certain things, we only acknowledge that he's the healer of the cold and not the cancer. We are limiting who God is and our perspective of faith has to grow. Our perspective of who Christ is to be able to receive him as such, to be able to receive him. In the fullness of God. That's what we talk about when we understand the fullness of God, the fullness of Christ, coming into the knowledge of the fullness of Christ. Because either he's the God of all or he's God at all. <laughs> there's, there's no in between. But, si but seriously, we have to understand this perspective of faith, right? That I can't limit him. How can I limit a limitless God? If this, this is the God that I read about in the text that uh, done all these miracle signs and wonders. Right. If that's the God that I serve, why am I limiting what he can do in and through my life? Some of you are dealing with fear. Some of you are dealing with anxieties that he died for that. Right. And so let's go ahead and get into the scripture. I'm kind of moving a little differently uh, here in the last few weeks in terms of taking breaks and stuff like that in between. But I just want to go ahead and get into the scripture. Uh, and it reads, surely he has borne. This is Isaiah 53 uh, verses four through five. I'm sorry. I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm so super excited. <laughs> but Isaiah 53 verse four through five. Y'all know this is New King James Version. It says, surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed. And so that's why I want to encourage you that he died for the things that some of us are dealing with. Some of us are wrestling with. Why are you still worried or stressing about this disease? Why are you still? I understand the, the human side of this, but understand that he died for that. Understand that when he that he was bruised. Um, uh, for our iniquities, he was wounded for our transgressions, right? So understanding that, we see that there are certain things that we don't have to deal with. There, are The anxiety that you're feeling, you don't have to wrestle with it. We know uh, that the Bible tells us to be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. So we don't have to be anxious for anything. It says, uh, God did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. So fear be gone now, right? So we're dealing with different things. And that's, you know, why in terms of uh, last week's episode, who told you that you weren't this or you couldn't achieve that or that you couldn't step out and do these things? That's why that's so important that we understand that he died for those things. He has given us and equipped us when he got up too. He rose so that we could rise in him. Right. Y'all getting that. Y'all get me excited. Y'all get me ahead of where I wanted to go. But he rose so that we could rise so that we could rise into who God has called us to be, that we wouldn't have to deal with fear, insecurity, lack, uh, anxiety, uh, sicknesses and diseases. He died for that. And he rose for that so that we could rise into new levels, into new uh, um, new levels in him. All right. 
And so I just want you to really understand that it's important that we cast those cares, whatever it is that you've been stressing, stressing or wrestling with, that you cast those things on him, that you cast your cares on him. And you may say, how do I do that? It's about fully saying, you know what? I've tried this on, on my own. I've tried this my way. But Lord, I trust you. I'm going to pray about this. And I'm going to leave it in your hands. I'm not going to force or manipulate my way into you blessing what I think is best for me. But I really want what you have in mind. The thing that you wrote in your book, the thing that you wrote at the beginning of time, those things, that's what I want for my life. That's what I want in my life. Right. And it's important that we understand that John 16, uh, 33 says these things I have spoken to you that in me you may have peace in the world. You will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So because he overcame, I can overcome. That's really uh, the the uh, bedrock or the uh, statement uh, or the foundation of cold therapy. Right. Christians overcoming life every day. Knowing that he overcame the world so that we could overcome, we could overcome in him, that we don't have to be a slave to uh, fear, insecurity, lack, these things, right? The, the trials and the tribulations that we experience on earth. We don't have to be a slave to those things because he overcame everything that we would face, everything that we would deal with. He's already overcome those things. And so now it's about us embracing the fullness of God, the, the fullness of Christ and who he is, because his resurrection confirmed that he was who he said he was and that he fulfilled the prophecies. Right. So it's important that we have that perspective of Christ and who he is in and through our lives. No more struggling with anxiety, no more struggling with insecurity, no more struggling with fear, no more struggling with sicknesses or diseases. Knowing that Mark 16, 17 says, and these signs shall follow them that believe they will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Right. They'll cast out demons in my name. Right. They'll raise the dead. All those things. So we have the authority. We have the power. But it's about our faith meeting the expectation of who Christ is and our experience and our encounters with him that we understand the fullness and we embrace the fullness of Christ. Right. I understand you may have your moments. You may have these things of, you know, these moments of I don't know. I don't know how it's going to. But that's why the Bible tells us in Proverbs three, five, to trust the Lord with all our heart and lean not on our own understanding, because we are we had this thought pattern that society has infiltrated and, and start to manipulate and twist our belief in, belief in God. And our belief in who he is in our lives and what he has already accomplished for us. But it's about understanding and getting back to the recognition that I don't have to deal with this. I don't have to deal with that because my father in heaven sent his son, Jesus, to die for that. And he rose so that I could rise. That is going to do it for this episode. I appreciate everyone that tuned in. Hopefully this word blessed you. This episode blessed you. And uh, yeah, so stop dealing with some of the things that you know God has died, for, that Christ died for, and that God has already overcome uh, in this world. So uh, as always, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Cold Therapy. Like and subscribe to the podcast on whatever podcasting platform you're listening to it on. If you're watching on YouTube, thank you so much. Subscribe, hit the notification bell, do all the YouTube stuff uh, so that you don't miss uh, the video or any other videos that I do on YouTube. And so, yeah, that's going to do it for this episode. Until next time, I'm your host, Che Cole. Peace.